Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Ben-Danun, and you are watching Israeli News Live. On the second day of Pope Francis's trip to the Middle East, he flew from Amman, Jordan, after being greeted like royalty in the capital there, flowers thrown at him as the well-wishers uh, were so happy to see him. He then flew over to Bethlehem, sidestepping Tel Aviv's international airport there, sidestepping Israel. In fact, in all articles that we've been able to find thus far that official from the Vatican, nowhere once do we find anywhere where the pontiff nor the Vatican refers to Israel as a state, but instead it's referred to as the land of Israel or a Palestinian state. Kind of ironic. In fact, in lieu of this, we've had all kinds of articles that are coming out, CNN News, uh, Haaretz as well. In fact, Haaretz reported here earlier the Pope had traveled straight from Jordan to Bethlehem where he was greeted by the Palestinian Authority Mahmoud Abbas uh, and other high-ranking PA officials. Abbas and Pope Francis held a private meeting uh, after which they attended mass at the Church of the Nativity in Manger Square. In fact, the picture in the background there was a picture of the security fence that had been placed around Israel trying to protect the Israelis from the different suicide bombers that would try to enter in and to kill innocent civilians. But oddly enough, the Pope, when he's en route to the mass, he stops at a place at the wall. Now, it's, it just makes you wonder if this is not something that is orchestrated because oddly enough, where he stops on the wall is written, Free Palestine. The Pope actually leaned his head against the wall and prayed silently. Another inscription on the wall in broken English read, Bethlehem looked like Warsaw Ghetto. It's interesting how the Palestinians are trying to glean sympathy from the Vatican with Pope Francis's visit there. Harris goes on to report, after meeting with Abbas, the Pope called for an end to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, stating, while I express my sympathy for those suffering because of the conflict, I want to say from the depths of my heart that, I, that the time has come to put an end to this situation, which has become more and more unacceptable. The Pope also called on both sides to recognize uh, the other's right to exist within internationally recognized borders and in safety and security. The Pope stated that peace would bring limitless opportunities and advantages to the peoples of the area and the entire world before he called on both sides to, to work decisively toward peace, even if it means making compromises. Uh, during their meeting, Abbas and Pope Francis spoke about advancing the Arab Peace Initiative. This was a plan that was done back in 2002. It's kind of interesting that the plan that uh, John Kerry had started uh, nine months ago seems to be scrapped. Unfortunately, what we're going to find out very soon, these are things that have already been done. The Vatican already has control. And while the world's attention is pulled away and placed on the Palestinians and what's going on there, we have no idea what's going on in the background. In fact, today at King David's tomb, the Israelis arrested 20 protesters that were protesting his visit there to Israel. And many clashes as some barricaded themselves inside, knowing that the Pope will be visiting there as well. It's very disturbing to know that Israelis can have no part of their own homeland. Unfortunately, we are just being fed whatever the media wants us to hear. And we don't realize what's going on in the background is only, or what's going on in the foreground, I should say, is just a charade. Everything's already set and done. We're just watching the formalities. Pope Francis also invited Mahmoud Abbas and Shimon Peres to come to the Vatican, actually to his own private quarters for a prayer, a prayer meeting of sorts, but to be able to kick off a new peace process. I found that interesting. I wonder why President or Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was not invited. Well, it was because he was not part of the 1993 Accords that was held by the Vatican and Shimon Perez. We'll keep you updated as this all unveils and we will try to give you a much deeper sense of the entire trip 
what's been said. And by the way, earlier when we mentioned about him praying using the name Allah, I do stand corrected on that. It was not the Pope that was saying Allah, but it was the officials that were with him that were using the name Allah, as they claim is politically correct. Interesting though, the Pope doesn't challenge it. I'm Stephen Bendenu, and you're watching Israeli News Live.